Well, hello and welcome back to Noah's Window. This is another Friday edition and we've titled this series, Let's Talk. And we're talking about things that I'm, I'm hoping that you guys are enjoying. I've gotten some feedback from you, so I'm glad you're on this little journey with us. We have uh, Pastor Stephen with us here again. And uh, today we thought we'd change the subject just a little bit. Um, and again, we might circle back around if you throw us some questions that we need to answer. But today, Stephen, I want us to talk about creation because it's such a hot button topic in today's world. And yes. I'd like to even zero in a little bit on what seems to be the big um, uh, bubble buster. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, I'm not good with all those words. Coup de gras, whatever. You know, like <laughs> six days. Now, really, could God really create the world in six days? Maybe this was just an allegory. Maybe this was just um, a generalization of creation. Uh, I mean, every culture everywhere has some kind of a narrative that they have. And so this is so incredible. Maybe it's not literal. What do you think? Well, I, I think it's important to talk about the six days because the Bible tells us that the, that the world was created in six days. And some, some scholars, uh, even some people who are Christians who are in the academic world will try to say, well, it couldn't have been six days. There's no way. And what's interesting to me is one thing that you can never do with scripture is put God in a box. That's right. Because, uh, you know, we were just talking about this off camera, but think about all the mighty things that God did in the Bible, right? He took Abraham and even in his old age, he gave Abraham a son. And Abraham became the father of a nation that still is on the world scene today. Uh, when that nation was enslaved in Egypt, God sent plagues on Pharaoh and he parted the Red Sea so they could walk across on dry land. And when he brought them into Canaan, he, uh, he miraculously made a way for them to start a nation. But on top of that, you look at what he did many years later, you look at you look at what Jesus did when he came to earth. He fed thousands of people with five loaves of bread and two fish. He, there was a funeral procession in the book of Luke. It, actually, it was cool. I love this story. There was a funeral procession for a young boy, and she, he, was a, 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 he was his mother's only son. And Jesus felt compassion for the family, so he walked over and he touched the casket. And the boy started talking, and he sat up, and, and everyone was amazed. And he raised a little girl. There was a girl... Who, um, who had died and Jesus walked over to the bed, you know, he, and when he first walked in, Jesus, you know, had to tell all the doubters to leave the room. You know, that's, isn't it great that God will tell the doubters to leave the room before he does a miracle? Because there were people laughing at Jesus, making fun of him, and Jesus said, get them out of here. And he walked over to the little girl who was dead and he took her by the hand and he said, Talita Kun, which in, in Hebrew means little girl, get up. And she, she was raised back to life. But m more importantly, you even look at the greatest miracle of all, which is the resurrection, that Jesus had been dead for three days, and yet he rose back to life, conquering death forever. So in light of all those things, uh, the idea that God could create the world in six days doesn't seem that outlandish. I think, you know, the thing is, why put... Uh, one of the things I love about God is he's proven time and time again that he can do what we consider to be impossible. And yet he makes it happen. And, you know, science even tells us that our universe sprang into existence in an instant. And God can make that happen. In fact, science tells us that somehow we got, the scientists try to explain it this way. They say somehow we got life, uh, the self-replicating cells, that somehow that just came about by chance. And uh, what's interesting is we don't have any scientific way of knowing how a living cell can happen by chance. Uh, Richard Dawkins is the most famous atheist on the planet. I mean, his name is synonymous with atheism. And what was interesting is at one point, Ben Stein, who's a Jew mm -hmm. uh, and, a, and a very smart guy, and a Ben decided he would interview Richard. And all he asked him was he asked him a simple question. He said, how did we get the first self-replicating cell? How did it happen? And what's interesting is Richard, who is the, the number one leading proponent of evolution in the world, literally, Richard looked at Ben and he said, nobody knows. And then he went on to explain that perhaps it was aliens. Aliens, yes. <laughs> and uh, what's interesting is uh, Richard Dawkins' team did not like the fact that that interview even happened because mm -hmm. it made the other side look so ridiculous because evolution cannot explain how we got the first living cell. Nobody, yeah. And, uh, you know, I think it's, it's very important because some people will say, well, 
you know, uh, evolution explains how we got here. No, it doesn't. It, it, doesn't. it, it, it yeah. you know, it, it doesn't explain how life life appeared. Well, there are, there's some complexities to this literal day thing, and and one of them would be, you have living things. Okay, so first of all, you have light before the sun, moon, and stars. And some people find that problematic. Um, and they would also say, well, you can't really have a day without the sun, moon, and stars because that's what you know, kind of creates the, uh, the day and the night. But again, again, well, first, before I say this thing, let me point out that there will be a time, if you read that back of the book, where there, we won't need the sun, moon, and stars, but yet there will still be light. So God, has, God is light, first of all. Yeah. And he created those particular lights but we're not limited to those lights. And somehow God was able to uh, sustain life before he created the sun, moon, and stars. But it is, it is perplexing. Well, in fact, the Bible at one point describes God as the, the, the father of heavenly lights. And uh, you're right. The, the Bible does tell us that someday there will be continuous day. I love how it says when evening comes, there will still, there will still be light. And so the idea that God can't make light when he wants to make light, uh, I would, you know, what's interesting, God can make darkness when he wants to make darkness. One of the plagues that um, was given to Egypt was the plague of darkness. And the, the book of Exodus says something very interesting. It says the darkness was so thick you could feel it. Mm -hmm. But in the land of Goshen, where, the, where God's people lived, there was light as usual. That's right. And, and, re so, you know, and remember, darkness is just the absence of light. So right. all that has to happen is God withdraw light and there's darkness. Exactly. In, Go in, in, in Egypt, there was darkness so thick you could feel it. God made that happen. That happened during the a.m. hours. Mm -hmm. And yet in Goshen, Goshen. The there was shining. light. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, first of all, that's a wonderful uh, depiction of how God makes makes a difference when he you know that god that god sees innocence and tries to and, and steps in and does what he does but it's a great example of the fact that god can make light when he wants to make light and so when i see let there be light in genesis i'm not surprised at all there, <laughs> yeah. there's light. okay so so here's another thing you know if you read the old testament you'll discover that god is really big on this the seventh day the sabbath day and you can't really have the Sabbath day if you don't precede it with six days of work. In fact, the scripture re, uh, repeats several times in, in establishing the Sabbath day. Six days you can work, and the Sabbath day is a day of rest. And there is no indication anywhere in the scripture that a day is in that context or any other context is anything other than a 24-hour period. And, and you really can't have the Sabbath loses its meaning. And, and if you read through the Old Testament, you find out the Sabbath was really important to God. Well, it was important to God because it's a day of rest. Mm -hmm. And first of all, isn't it great that we worship a God who yes. believes that we should have a day of rest? And, uh, you know, Jesus' enemies, the Pharisees, they wanted to use the Sabbath as sort of a religious... Um, they wanted to hit people over the head with the Sabbath to basically say, if you... You know, if you even pick up something and carry it, you could be in trouble. And yet Jesus explains to them that the Sabbath was actually made to meet the needs of people. And mm -hmm. so, uh, first of all, it was a day that God rested, but also God created the Sabbath so that people could have a day of rest. Right. Because, uh, and it's, it's important, you know, I find it interesting, and again, this is probably more than you want to know, but in 1928, when Joseph Stalin went on his purge, where he tried to purge Christianity from Russia, which he was unsuccessful because we still have many Christians in mm -hmm. Russia today, that one of the very first things he did was to get rid of weekends on the Russian calendar because he didn't want people to have a day of rest because his regime was all about work. work, work and work. also he didn't want people to go to church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And so I noticed that when one of the most wicked leaders in, in human history, when he wanted to purge everything that was good, one of the first things he went after was the Sabbath, uh, the weekend. And uh, it's important to have rest. And I, I think it's, I, I, you know, and, and so when, when we talk about creation, when we talk about the Sabbath, all of these things have a purpose. And mm -hmm. so when people try to say, oh, well, it couldn't possibly have been in six days. And what about the Sabbath? What, if you pour through Genesis, which I know is a big book, but if you pour through Genesis, you will find a nonstop string of names, details, places, miracles, mm -hmm. all these mm -hmm. things. It's very detailed. Genesis is a book of history. That's right. It says what it means, and it means what it says. Okay, I'm going to interrupt here because this 
Noah's window went well over 20 minutes and so we needed to divide it in two. I hope you're enjoying this and Lord willing next Friday we'll have part two on the subject of creation and I suspect we'll have even more sessions on that because there's just so much to talk about. So uh, let's close in a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for loving us, for being the all-powerful God that can speak this world into existence and that you hold it together each and every day, but then in all of that, you still love each one of us so individually, so personally. And we just thank you for your great love and your great power. And I just pray that you would be with everyone in our Noah's Window family today. Father, please watch over them. Many will be traveling. I pray that you keep them safe. Watch over us with our families. I pray that you keep us well. I pray that you just keep the evil one away. And we're just going to trust you to wrap your arms of love around us, draw us close into your presence, send your protection, and keep the evil one away. We'll be careful to give you the praise for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so the weekend's coming up. I hope you can join us at New Spring. There's so many exciting things going on. You can go to newspring.org to get all the details. And if you can't be in person at, on campus, you can watch us online at newspring.org. And we're going to look forward to seeing you back here on Noah's Window on Monday morning. Love you guys. See you soon. God bless.